Hey everybody, and welcome back to Elden Ring. Trying out a different emote for the intros. I've been doing the wave every single time up until now. Except for last episode, you know what I mean. Speaking of last episode, last time we played lots of multiplayer. Did some co-op around these parts. We, we helped someone fight Morgoth. We helped someone a little bit go through the capital. Then we helped someone through a catacomb. There was a lot of places we were sent to thanks to the summoning pools in this game. My plan for that worked perfectly. My plan for the Colosseums didn't, though. We struggled to find some players there, but we still did find players in the duels, at least. I sadly couldn't play any uh, team matches, but what can I do? The duels were the next best thing, after all. We also wrapped up some small things, saw the end of some quest lines, so if you saw that video, saw that I played multiplayer, and were like, never mind, you might want to go back to it just so you can see what all we finished. We wrapped up Nefeli's quest for one thing, so that's pretty interesting. You know, remember Nefeli? <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> this time, my sights are set on the place we can't see. So maybe I shouldn't say sights are set. My thoughts are set on the Royal Waterway, I mean the sewers, underneath Landell. Just, you know, I'm in a big city in a game, so it makes me think of that other big city in the game, you know what I mean. We picked up an item here and opened these doors and days long past, but we have yet to venture beyond this point. Hello, little... What's down there, if anything? I don't really see anything. We're getting different music already, stepping into the sewers. We can tell this is a different zone of the map. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. The sewers are so big that you might even consider them a legacy dungeon, depending on who you are. I've seen many people think that only the ones on the surface are legacy dungeons, and so this one is kind of like a minor dungeon, or it's just another area. But I don't know. I would say, I would say this counts, and that there's like... And I won't reveal how many legacy dungeons there are, it's, there's still the element of surprise. You never know how many more we're gonna see. Uh, I, what I do know is that this place is tanking my frame rate, so, uh, yeah. Also, what I do know, this place is significantly higher level than Landell is. If I kill this rat, well, okay, I did 800 damage to the rat, and it didn't die. Normally, 800 damage to a rat will kill them completely. But yeah, this rat still survived, so, oh my god, seriously. <laughs> the rats are also hitting me for quite a, while, a lot, but that they're not hitting me for too much since I have a lot of armor on. Let's see, oh yeah. What if I were to attack them with my Twin Blade? That might be better uh, damage measurement. I'm just saying, when you enter an area and you don't, like, two-shot the rats with your small weapons, you should be scared. <laughs> and the rats were dealing a decent amount of damage, too. I, I already said that. I don't need to say that again. All right, we saw we got a view of another room in the place over there. And hi, how's it going? All right, they're not bad, honestly. But that could be because I gave my weapons lots of upgrades last time. I think this thing's, like, plus 16 now. Yeah, it's plus 16. I do want to use the Dark Moon Greatsword more, as it is new. I just got the stats to use it last episode, so we can finally try it out properly. See how this goes. Are you... Were you friendly? Did I just kill a friendly rat? If so, I'm very sorry, but, um, you know. I'll, I'll, I'll spare the friendly dogs. Friendly rats, though, mm, I don't know. I'll have to think about that. And clearly, I didn't think about that at all, since he's freaking dead now. The Subterranean Shunning Grounds is the official name of this place. The Shunning Grounds for none other than Omens. Those are your main enemies down here. Actually, main enemies, sort of. They're the first enemies. No, the first enemies were the rat. You got the idea. They're, they're down here. They're kept down here. That's the main deal with this place. These guys are super tough compared to the Omens from earlier parts of the game. Look at that. 554 and it did that little pinprick. And check it out. That's the power that the fell twins we fought at the end of uh, episode 36 were doing to us. That little breath attack. Oh, dear. Oh, God. I think I might honestly want to get Frostbite out for this. As much as I am enjoying Dark Moon Greatsword, my twin blade might be better, I'm just saying. Ooh, okay. Uh, I'm going to hit you with a charge attack. You interrupted with a kick. All right, you're not bad, though. If I approached you earlier, you definitely would be bad. But... I think by doing all of the content that I have throughout the game, I'm leveling myself to be just right for this area. That is one advantage of doing everything in the game. As slow as it is, you are at least prepared for areas like this. Oh boy. I saw that, uh, I saw the effect of that, especially with the later areas that other people describe as being, like, huge difficulty spikes, and for me, they were s sort of smaller difficulty spikes. I don't think these guys have huge view ranges, so I am safe in here. Uh, can I level up y <laughs> No. <laughs> I killed one enemy and a couple rats. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, the rats don't count as enemies. Did I really think I'd be able to level up? 
You know, I honestly might want to start off with a rune arc, even though it would be satisfying to get 30 rune arcs. Possibly we'll find another one down here. The rune arcs definitely heal you a little bit. That I, that I've noticed. We have a summoning pool over there. You know what? I'm gonna use Moonlight Greatsword on ya. Let's go! Oh man, a thousand damage, and it's not even doing that much. The a thousand damage was mainly, uh, mainly came from sneak damage. Ooh, we got a critical hit! Wait, this weapon does frost? Oh my god, it does frost. It doesn't do as much as my twin blade does. 110. That that must uh, be upgraded if you upgrade using smithing stones, because yeah, it definitely was not 110 before. I had no idea this weapon did frost. I love it even more now. Yeah, I'm super happy that I welcomed it into my arsenal. I know, right? I'm using another weapon in this freaking game. <laughs> I feel like I've had a better job with melee weapon variety in Dark Souls 3. Hey, I'm making up for it with spells, though, at least. Ow. Oh god. No, no, I don't want to be hit with their a axes at all. Just the little slaps and the little, like, you know, holy breath or whatever that is they have. The stinky breath. I don't know. It's the sewer, so it's probably stinky breath. That does a pretty small amount of damage. I don't want to know how much their axe does. Their axe might, like, literally kill me, even with this armor on. Apparently I've heard people say that armor actually does matter in Elden Ring, where I could swear armor didn't do a goddamn thing in Dark Souls 3. Like... But apparently in the later New Game Plus cycles, when you actually get that far, armor actually does help. Uh, so that, that's good to know. Like, your higher damage negations do matter. Blood-soaked mask. Formed from tightly wounded bandages soaked through with blood, even though its ghastly cover is more inviting than the festering faith beneath. Yep, that's very, that's very fun. I'm glad we have that. The festering arms beneath. Festering with what? S scarlet rot? Poop? Probably poop. I think I would like to go down here first. I think this is a uh, this is a pretty small area. It, it should be mostly easy to do in one one little go, especially with the moonlight greatsword on our side or the dark moon greatsword. I, I keep getting that mixed up. Moonlight greatsword is the skill. Dark moon greatsword is the uh, actual name of the thing. Hi, <laughs> it came out of a box. It's like that one uh, soldier in Black Mesa just pops out of a box. By the way, uh, I'm. I've kind of, like, postponed working on the Black Mesa video. Sorry about that to uh, anyone who actually slightly cared about that, which I think there's, like, probably one of them. Uh, one of you ever did... Because most of you probably forgot that I even was working on that video. But yeah, I finished writing the script for it. I just haven't gotten around to um, recording it at all. I would, like, insert the excuse that I was sick by the time that I finished the script. But as you can tell, I am no longer sick, so yeah, I have no excuse anymore, really. There we go. I can interrupt the attack, and I can go in for some hits, but holy shit, look at you! Look at you! Look at that damage, look at that health. Yep, this is what you this is what you expect from Elden Ring's late game. You think that's kind of annoying? Yep, you're right. Oh man, this is working great, though. And what's cool about this is I can shoot these projectiles, and it doesn't cost me any FP. It only costs FP for the initial charge. Dude, this weapon's awesome! This weapon is genuinely, like, really freaking cool. Uh, that's not really freaking cool, though. You get you get screwed. Like, I don't know how, like... I don't know how good this weapon is, uh, considered to be in the community of Elden Ring, but I don't know. I'm having tons of fun with it. It's doing lots of damage for me. Oh, no, I'm poisoned. I have neutralizing bullets, though. It's okay. Because, uh... Things just kind of playing keep away, so I'm using range on it. I forgot I could do that. No. <laughs> I was a complete and total idiot there. Holy fuck. Fortunately, these omens, as tough as they are, they're actually not too hard to sneak past. All you got to do is crouch uh, when you get near them, drop down in this hole, and you should be fine. Oh, shit. Okay, don't do that. It's okay. He didn't see me at all. <laughs> Perception 100 <laughs> from that omen. <laughs> Dude, these rats just like, they have no idea what's going on. They're like, what? Uh, 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 I'm dead, I guess. <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> uh, this uh, this flower always uses that attack. Screw you. Oh, wow. They actually take more damage while they're stunned. That's good to know. Fuck you. Once annoying enemies, always annoying enemies. They have a bunch of babies to back them up. Excuse- Who's doing that? Oh, you. You are- 
there's a third one! There's freaking a third one. Well, uh, guess which enemy we're not fighting in this room. I just wanted to get my revenge on plant number two. Plant number three can live. This is why sewers smell so bad. It's actually not the poop. It's because there's a bunch of flowers in it spewing poison breath. That everything makes sense now. All right, up this ladder, we have a room. <laughs> You know what I was saying about how it would be satisfying to have 30 rune, rune arcs? Uh-oh, okay, take a look around. We got finger creepers here. The finger creepers have noticed me. Uh, once again, not a lot of help. Man, maybe I was overhyping this area with how tough it would be. Wow. Even Lanto is tougher in a few ways, because at least that place has knights. Well, this place has omens, and omens attack weirdly, but still. Um, well, you can clearly see the large guy. First of all... All right, we get it. You're cool and evil and creepy and whatnot, and I should let you out of there, but also I'm fighting a hand. <laughs> no, come on. Oh, that's going to kill me so bad, isn't it? No, it's not. 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 Get up. Holy fuck. Get the freak up. <laughs> after grab animations, you're after hit, getting hit by grab attacks, your characters just sit there on the ground for, for freaking ever. <laughs> And I guess it makes sense. I probably wouldn't get up quickly after those attacks either, but then the enemy's preparing a melee swap, and you're like, come on, come on, chop, chop, time to get moving. I hate this. I hate this battle. I hate this battle. I hate this fucking, I hate this fucking finger creeper so much. All right. We're ready to do this now? We ready to actually start fighting this finger creeper? Yeah, I am. There we go. There we go. This is how we fight the finger creepers. We show no mercy! Fuck you! Yep, that's what you did to me, and I do it back to you. Oh my god, that finger creeper is so annoying, man. <laughs> With the level scaling of this area. Lost Ashes of War was guarding. Using the sewer jail key, we can indeed open the door for Dung Eater. So, um... Hello, buddy. Uh, you're free now. I don't know if that's a good thing. My name is not important. Oh, I, am the I guessed that. The you know you have a spirit sent over to the round table more. advertising herself. <laughs> Alright, so as you know, I keep a list of... Uh, I kept, I've kept a list in my notes on the side here about uh, every notable NPC side quest in the game. And uh, for this guy, I wrote the following. Fuck this guy, kill him, so who am I to deny my own orders? <laughs> Literally, no redeeming qualities about this guy whatsoever. I don't know if anyone in the comments is complaining about me doing this. If you are, I would like you to evaluate who you are as a person, because holy shit. Why would you ever, ever do this guy's quest line? Ever. There is one small, tiny reason you can do it, and that is, if you if Celibus is still alive at this point, you can feed Dung Eater the potion towards the end of his quest, and that will actually uh, turn him into a puppet. Because that's what the potions do. I don't know if I ever went over that, but if you give Nefeli the potion, she becomes a puppet. And so you could always give the potion, uh, save it for Dung Eater, and make Dung Eater a potion. Apparently he's actually a really good fighter if you uh, summon him as a puppet. That said, though, well, Celibus is dead because I didn't want to do anything for him either. So, Dung Eater dies too. Are you in heavy roll, my guy? <laughs> Are you in heavy roll? Well, you're also in heavy attack. I guess makes sense. Oh man, I wish you would like, I don't know, let me hit you. I wish you, enemy in the video game, would let me deal damage to you at will. I would really prefer it if you could just, you know, let me sit there and take it. Come on now. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Bless who, the shit? Fuck off! And with one fell swoop, the world was made a better place. What do I have on me? What is this? Oh, armor, okay. D damage negation down is the buff debuff under there. You get his lovely set and his lovely sword. 
Sinister Greatsword, fashioned from a giant's backbone. Meets out wounds like a lopsided saw blade and restores some FP upon defeating an enemy. Milos was undersized for a giant and was used as sullied and terribly grotesque. Unique skill, Shriek of Milos. Bless you! That's how it goes, according to Dung Eater. Horrific Cursed Scream, I agree. Reduces all damage negation and stats resistances for nearby foes. Lactive Strong Attacks will change to a combo attack. Pretty neat, and I guess he was using that against us. Malformed hell, resem helm resembling an omen with its horns cut off. That's what the little studs are. Worn by the Dung Eater, its form of the vi is a vision of the landscape of his mind and of his appearance as he wished to see it. The heart of an omen without the body to match. Could there be any crueler existence? What does it matter then if the curse claims all? So I guess the Dung Eater was like somewhat taken over by the same thing taken over the omens. So maybe he didn't want to like kill and defile. I don't give a shit. I'm killing him anyway. <laughs> what a horrible fucking character. What? Would you believe me if I told you? I may have mentioned this in the past. I don't remember. That guy, that guy's quest line leads you to unlock an ending for this game? That's right! You can have an ending related to the Dung Eater! Why the fuck? Give me one genuine reason to pick the Dung Eater's ending over other people. I'll wait, very patiently, for someone to give an actual reason to choose that. Hello, we have this route here. I don't remember where this goes, and I'm kind of scared about where it goes. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> bye! <laughs> what just one of the slugs detached and fell down there? We don't have to kill them yet. So, you see these sewer tunnels here? This is gonna be our main deal for the area. A glass shard. Alright, very cool. Honestly, I think I'm gonna go back to the grace real quick. Actually, I can't level up, can I? No, I can't. I need 7,000. I need 70,000. So, I guess we could continue this way for now. I doubt I'm gonna get any flasks from doing this. Good thing is, they don't deprive you of flasks completely. I think there are uh, scarabs you can find to refill your flasks, so that's quite nice. I'm gonna go to the left first, see what's over here. Holy crap, that was insanely satisfying. <laughs> Alright, what'd you drop? Strip of white flesh, that's infinitely better than a glass shard, because a glass shard is this game's equivalent of rubbish, where an item that literally does nothing for you at all. Hmm, this looks... This looks ominous. I don't know if I like the looks of this. Well, I'm gonna check it out just to see. Oh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Gotta get, gotta get rid of you. Uh, got a door here with a a revenant behind it. I don't like that. What that implies, especially because I don't have the thing equipped that I want to quit. So maybe uh, we'll come back down here later. Well, this is that was, was a door that doesn't open from the side, so we can't do anything down here for now. This is where a shortcut will open back up to. How about this way? I think this is the way that I was planning to head first. There's another hole to drop down. Oh no. Oh yeah, we're not going down there. Yump. And pick up those rainbow stone arrows. I totally forgot you can make those. Every time I see that item's name, I always forget that that item exists, and so I'm like, hey, I forgot that item exists. So it's actually kind of a memorable item in that way. Very strange how that works. It's like the second uppercut swing doing more. I think it is. It's either that or the sneak damage. Fireproof dry liver. Thanks. Yeah. So many fire attacks to worry about down here. Very, very useful. What's this way? These pipes are kind of confusing. We'll get the hang of them eventually. I remember what's in here. Oh no. I remember what's in here. It's an omen, for one thing. Um, let me do this. Yeah! I gotta heal my, um, uh, FB so that I can then do this and attack him with a ranged. Attack him with the projectile. Oh, hold on. Let me try that again. There we go. I want to avoid that. Now, I do believe that there is a second one that can- Oh, wow, that was very little damage. Probably my talisman blocking most of that. There is a second one that can drop down later. That's about- that's a problem. So I think I- I think taking this guy away is the best idea, if you can. Uh, jump attacks do stun them, so do the strong attacks. I like to get off as many as I can. Unfortunately, they're not going to make that easy. For good reason, I might add. Oh, oh no. Uh, projectiles, projectiles. Oh god. Fighting him in these tunnels is really hard, though. I'll say that much. Alright. No, 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 no. I didn't know you were close. Enough for that. Okay. Good thing I got around him. I don't like what was over there. 
Okay, heal. And have the health taken away from me two seconds later. That's exact. Why can your kicks go that far? And I'm out. This is going incredibly well. No! 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 Thank you. Oh my god. Please tell me the second one's not gonna attack, because holy shit, I want to go this way right now, because there is something good to see. Alright, there's that one guy, and I think if you fight him in this room, he catches the attention of a second one. But I think I lured him far enough away that we did not catch the attention of the second one. I hope not. That said, that second one ain't it. There is a third one right there. I th where's the second one around here? Uh, actually, oh, right there. So yeah, he's close enough to here, and then this third one I think is far enough away that they shouldn't be a problem. Now, can I open this? Oh, you can. All right. I'm going to hope those guys don't see me while I open this. Oh, yeah, this is a later room. I think this is actually, like, the room we need to go in next, but I'd rather wait on that. We got a network of tunnels to explore elsewhere. All right, to be honest, my plan with this place... Yes, you turn around and move away, please. My plan with this place is I would like to finish it this video, but I don't think I'm going to explore absolutely everything in it. What that means is there's going to be a small area that I leave for later, since we're going to have plenty of time to come back for it. And the reason for that is there's something pretty neat coming up that I'd rather uh, get to quickly instead of having us spend two videos down in these freaking sewers. Is that guy guarding the... Oh, God. Are these guys patrol again? <laughs> I think they, like, they patrol mostly, like, straight lines. This guy's, like, going between walls. The other guy goes down the whole length of the hallway. Oh, uh, sh... Uh, sh... Um... Here. Turn off the lan- No, don't look at the wall! Turn off the lantern! No, you see nothing. There's nothing. Nothing is over here. I hope he doesn't notice the glowing blue effects on my sword and my hat. <laughs> it's like an indie horror game, man. You're just sitting there waiting for the dude to turn around. Come on. Come on now. Go the other direction. Yeah, that. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. That's not right. Where, where am I? Where am I right now? Oh, wow. I thought I was in a completely different area. Okay, the sight of grace is here. I thought... Okay, I had my directions confused there. All right, let's change around my spells. All right, as fun as it is to use, Gavel of Hyma, I don't think it's going to help a lot. Neither is Magma Shot. So instead of them, I'm going to put on my old friend Roxling. And then secondly, heal. I'm sure you can guess why where to go from here. Now, this door's locked. There's the other door uh, over there. Um, I think I might want to go down this ladder first, though. Let's see where this goes. I think we'll find our way back into those pipe tunnels uh, later, so we can always um, explore more over there later. I know there's an item I missed those two omens were guarding. My health was too low for that. Freezing grease. That's actually the first time we picked that up. I bet you can't guess what that does. It's a grease. You're oven on your weapon. It deals cold. It's like an extra flavoring for your weapon. <laughs> Give it the freezing flavor. The flavor of ice. As you can see, we have some uh, imp dudes. Let's get them off the wall. And oh, God. I'm scared of these guys. Uh, this is not doing very much damage, is it? Uh, it's certainly doing less damage than these guys usually take. Actually, two-handed is pretty darn good, all things considered, considering the fact that they are imps. Uh, I think it's like doing similar damage how it was like when we first fought these guys. Hey, you've got a different hat on. I like that. Or a different head, I mean. Not not a different hat. You don't have a hat. You have a different head. Yeah, look at that. That's different. Because all the ones in the catacombs just have the same, like, cat head on that we picked up uh, in Landell. I was going to say last time. We did not pick it up last time. How you, how you doing, friend? Get off the wall. Off the freaking wall. Off the wall. Down to fight me. Like a real imp. All right, you see that place down there with the giant lobster? Yeah, um, I think I'm. that is the area I'm going to save for later. Maybe. We'll see how it goes, honestly. I, I don't know if I, uh, I will. I might change my mind on that as we go. But still, there, there's a lot to see in this place, and uh, if we go to finish it, if we go to, like, complete the whole thing, uh, area, every single area in it, we might be here for, like, two hours. Hey, 666 six, six damage on the final kill. All right, up this door or stairs that's not a door you have an open area with an omen oh okay it was actually gated behind something cool well i'm just gonna get this prepared 
And we're gonna use it on you. I don't know if charging increases the damage. I like to think that it does. It just feels better that way. That's a big damage increase, the sneak damage. Holy crap. And so is this. Oh, man. It does damage both times. I love it when critical hits do damage for the stab and the pullout. It's so satisfying. Shadow Bait. Incantation of the Two Fingers Servants, who once serves as the Assassins of the Round Table Hold. So the Baleful Shadows? Creates a pale gold shadow before the caster, luring foes of human build and attracting their aggression. This incantation can be cast while motion uh, crouching and will still affect foes that are already in a combat state. Said that go those beguiled by the statue, see within it a hated foe. So yeah, Baleful Shadows. <laughs> That's kind of like the um, uh, a spell version of the Alluring Skull equivalent, which I can't remember what it's called in this game. Because it's not Alluring Skull. That just opens you back up to the main hall. That ladder's where we came in from, so now we just keep going. I'm, try I'm trying to think what that item is. It's not Pungent Blood Cocktails. That's Bloodborne. Um, do I have it in item crafting? Do I have an inventory at all? I don't believe I do. Well, it's something. There's some equivalent to it in this game, I'm pretty sure. Hi, I see you there. Um, I think... Oh, three, okay. I think out of all of these, these two are probably the more important. So I'm going to start with a shot at you. Going to wail on you a little bit while the other guy doesn't seem to notice. That plan went a lot better than I thought it would. There's another one I didn't know existed, I think. No, wait. It's just this guy. Okay. This guy was the guy on the side, I'm pretty sure. Wait, there is another guy I didn't notice. Crap, and he's throwing stuff. Get the fire grease out of here. I don't need to know that I have fire grease. Please just make that go away automatically in the next freaking game. Thumbs off. All right. <laughs> Mushroom, uh, fork tatchet, nothing new from any of them. I see you there. There seems to be no way to get to those pipes from here. We'll have to find a way to the pipe up above to progress any further. And unfortunately, I think that means that our time in this room is done for now. Well, maybe, unfortunately, isn't the right word. Maybe it is actually fortunate that our time in this room is done. Fine, let's go drop down. <laughs> let's go drop down. All right, to drop down, pretty sure all you gotta do is head to this side of the room and, well, drop drop down. Actually, actually. Oh, okay, yeah, you can. <laughs> I was gonna say, wait, can you drop down? Yes, you can. Right here, uh, that was fall damage. I think if you jump a little bit sooner, where it's a little bit higher, you don't take any. Or maybe you do always take fall damage coming down here. I can't really remember. This place should be pretty easy to reach. You just climb down the ladder into this room, and then you die to the lobster a bunch of times. That's what happens, right? God, look at how much damage I'm doing to this guy. Oh boy, we're fighting a beefed up late game lobster. I'm not really sure how I feel about this, because I didn't do so great hot against the other lobster earlier in the game. I'm just kidding, I'm doing just fine. We're, we got this. We got this, right? One more hit. Bam! <laughs> I actually did it no damage, but that's because I used ranged magic on it. If I were going just melee, would have been a bit harder. Not saying that it's a bad thing to go with, um, to use ranged weapons. In fact, I don't think it's a bad thing at all. Uh, there's a second one, though. I like to nickname this place Red Lobster, because it's just a place with two random lobsters in the middle of the sewers. And you know, the color scheme of the surrounding place kind of looks like the color scheme for Red Lobster. <laughs> I might be completely wrong about that, but I've always imagined like a, you know, greenish gray hue for the restaurant. Never actually been to one, though. Red Lobster and Applebee's are those two restaurants I've seen uh, commercials for all the time, but I've never actually been to. Ugh. So I have no idea how good or how, like, okay they are, if they are if they are considered good or not. I'm sure they are. They they seem kind of high quality. Oh, God. You know, seafood isn't my favorite thing, though. Like, the, from the little I've tried of seafood, I, I haven't tried that much seafood, admittedly. I've had, like, fish sandwiches, though, and it's not my favorite thing in the world, so I don't know how compelled I would be to go to a Red Lobster. Uh, either way, this Red Lobster, I gotta say, pretty fun experience. The lobsters were pretty fun to fight, and though one did hit me over the head, it's okay, it'll heal. With this talisman on, time heals all wounds. It's just like Terraria's natural uh, regeneration, except I have it on forever. Down here, you can find the sacred treasure of Moog's Shackle. If you don't remember, way back... When we were talking to White Mask Vare in, um, what was it, Liernia, and uh, we were progressing his little quest. That's a tool, not a key item. He mentioned someone named Luminary Moog. A fetish bathed in golden magic. Shackles were once were used to bind the accursed people called the Omen. So Moog is another Omen, I'm guessing. These ones were made to keep a particular Omen under strictest confinement. Though faint, the shackles still retain vestiges of Hauser. 
of power. It's the same description for Margit, but from it, <laughs> literally the same with a name swap. That's so funny. I've already read that. Oh man. Okay. Before I go in there, <laughs> I'm sure you can see w from that brief flash what's waiting for us in there. And you're very excited now. But I do want to scan the walls briefly, just in case there's anything I missed. Nah, that's it. Welcome to catacombs. <laughs> there's a sight of grace down here and everything. <laughs> Literally catacombs inside the subterranean shunning grounds. Which is not really an open world zone, mind you. I can level up. Let's do that. Okay, I think I'm gonna get my strength to an even number after this point. Oh, uh, we lost the 111 level up, what a shame. After this point, I'm gonna start leveling up Vigor a lot, because at this point, if you don't have Vigor too leveled up, you probably should start getting Vigor leveled up, and you know? It's like some people say, the late game of Elden Ring is quite a big difficulty spike from Lanedale, so having the extra Vigor helps a lot. Honestly, I would say, no matter what character you are, you should level up Vigor at some point. It doesn't matter, like, if you want to roleplay or not. Level Vigor, or else this game will be a painful experience uh, <laughs> at later points. It does kind of harm the whole RPG thing of like, hey, I could choose the stats I want. What if I want to play as a character who doesn't, isn't able to survive lots of hits? Well, sorry, but that doesn't really work for Dark Souls games, I don't think. I think you are, like, kind of supposed to level up Vigor by design. These guys are respawning. Yeah, look at that. They're respawning faster than I can kill them. Something fishy's going on here. Okay, well, there's fishy thing number one. We solved that mystery, but there's just another one down here. All right, attack one of these. Maybe the one with a different texture. And look who it is. <laughs> I honestly love that. The spirit caller snail returns once again, and then it falls to pieces. What's this? Halig Drake Talisman plus one. Holy damage increased. I don't know who deals holy damage in this game, so that's probably useless to me, because I, I don't know. I don't know what deals holy damage to you in this game. I feel like that's kind of something the players use more than anything. I'd like to continue through the rest of this room as there's more to see. Golden Rune level 11. Golden Rune a level 11. Uh, I don't know what that opens. Oh, yes I do. It's this. Actually, aren't there two omens right here? Yes, sir! Uh, okay, no, no, it's actually just this guy, yeah. Remember this statue against this one omen we fought a little bit, a little bit ago? Coming out of the big room with the pipes? That's where we are now. Okay, to be entirely honest with you, I don't know if I want to do Landell Catacombs just yet. I think uh, it is genuinely a full-scale mini-dungeon just waiting underneath this place. So instead, I'm gonna teleport over here, even though I'm like two feet away from it because I'm lazy, and then we're gonna explore the rest of the shunning grounds. I just wanted to briefly go down there, find this item, as it is pretty good. How do you open that door again? I'm trying to remember. I think you do have to, like, you have to go this way, you have to go down to the pipes. I think you have to go beyond this area and uh, scrounge around to the pipes a little bit more. That's not what I meant. Um, it's <laughs> he actually didn't see me still? What the hell? Oh, this game is so funny sometimes. Unintentionally. So... I can't summon anyone. I would love to summon someone. No, that guy was stunned. Alright, you know what? I at least want the item out of this. I don't care if I kill these two guys or not. I at least want to get the item from this. It's a smithing stone level 7. Awesome. Alright, let's try. That's not what I meant to do, no! <laughs> this is going well, isn't it? Isn't this going well? <laughs> it's why it's 3,000 runes. Like, who gives a fuck, right? <laughs> Those two guys can live. I don't need to slaughter everything in every single dungeon I go through. Look at this guy, he's crooked! <laughs> Cause he's standing on the slope, that's so funny. And kind of adorable, honestly. Alright, we're going back to this place through the uh, Dung Eater route entrance, that's what I'm gonna call it. Why don't I drop down here and see where this goes? Um, yet another pipe. That's not confusing or anything. It's okay, it'll get less confusing as time goes on. But honestly, like, this place, it feels huge at first and is kind of big, but it's not the largest area ever. Oh god, I don't like the sight of this. Got revenants. Now the revenants on their own are no trouble, but I'm sure you know what I'm fear- I'm, I'm sure you know what I'm scared of. I'm sure you know at this point. If you don't, then you clearly haven't watched this entire playthrough. See episode 16, uh, sort of towards the beginning for my detailed opinion on, uh, what I'm scared of facing down here. Hey, it's this place. 
This is, uh, this is the shortcut we unlocked down that one dead end. Okay. That is the most satisfying crap ever. I love it. I love it, dude. Oh, boy. Let's do it. This drop takes you down to the big room. Can you guess what would be in the big room? Oh, God. Where is it? Gray Violet. Just two of these guys? That's not what I remember. Ah, oh, that's what I remember, right. I'm too busy killing these guys to get the heal off. Let's do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it! Yes, nice. Unfortunately, didn't get the critical hit. All right, I think I'm gonna have to go for another one. All right, good. I actually, like, dodging the side kind of helps there. Um... Perfect! That was honestly, like, not that crazy of a Royal Revenant. It didn't do as many leaps as it could have. God, I, I would love to, like, mimic the Royal Revenants to mock them, because I fucking hate them. They are still, I think, my least favorite enemy in this game. My least favorite regular enemy in this game. I absolutely hate them. Like, the heal mechanic is good against them, but if an enemy is so bad that I I need to use a cheese tactic against them for them to be any fun, that doesn't make the enemy better. Like, using this tactic against them makes them easier to kill, but it doesn't make them better as enemies, in my opinion. Uh, anyway, my train of thought is completely off the rails now, so let's get it back on. And by get it back on, I mean not remember what the hell I was just talking about, and so continue on and hope that I remember within the next two minutes, or else I'll just be sitting there with an awkwardly unfinished thought, uh, having no idea what the fuck it was going to be. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, oh yeah, alright. I was thinking of like doing some bit where I record myself in real life mocking the Royal Revenants, just like leaping back and forth and grabbing my hands, but also, I don't... I don't know if I'm ready to reveal my face, my appearance, anything like that yet, so, um... That, that can't be done. Also, I never actually tried to take an in-real-life video and uh, use it in a YouTube video before. I think I tried once, and the uh, file types were incompatible because I edit my I use a Windows PC, as you can clearly tell. Elden Ring is not available for Mac. Well, I mean, you could have assumed that this was a console, so yeah, maybe you couldn't clearly tell it. But still, I, I'm playing this game on PC, so uh, obviously it's a Windows. However, I have an iPhone. So, yeah, that kind of, like, difference in Apple products makes things a lot more inconvenient than they really should. Is this back towards... Yes, this is back towards here. Okay. So, I think we're starting to get the layout of this place. We're starting to have everything explored. We explored the big room. This is nothing more than a dead end. There was an item in here. I think that's the room I just... Yeah, that's the, that's the place I just dropped down into. And that is the lower pipe that just circles back out of there. So, it is good to go into to get that item. There's nothing else to see. And here, we're back out with the rats. Okay, now I think we need to go down the big room. There's no ladder going back out. I just noticed. Hi, Omen. I'm not here. There's no ladder going back out of here. I... Guess I can teleport? <laughs> so, the funny thing about subterranean shunning grounds is despite being an area that takes place beneath the ground, it is not considered an underground area, but in the likes of, like, you know, Shifra and whatnot, because it does not have an underground map. There's never any map you get for coming down here. So, yeah, if this, if you count this as a legacy dungeon, this means this is the only legacy dungeon that you can't see the map of. So, you'll, you'll have to navigate this place with your own memory. I kind of like that a little bit. That just takes us back down there. So, I think the only place we have left to go is the big room over this direction. And I think I made the slightest bit of noise to distract that omen, and he somehow doesn't freaking see me. What the hell is wrong with you guys? You guys need glasses. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright. I'll say, as, like, incredibly powerful as these enemies are if you come here blind, not knowing that this place is significantly higher level, they're very easy to sneak past, so there's kind of a stealth element to the sewers, and I like that. It's it's part of what I like about, say, um, High Wall of Lothric in Dark Souls 3, where um, a lot of the night enemies that are really powerful early on, you can sneak past. If you just, like, hang out to the side and wait for them to pass, you can go right past them without even uh, alerting them. And I, I quite like that. I, I quite like when uh, Dark Souls games implode, like, a stealth element! I didn't want to go that way! The camera jerked that direction! I swear it did! Long fall- Hi! Spoiler alert! Jesus! <laughs> That's a long freaking fall! 
But yes, I like having the option to sneak past the enemies. It's, it's just something I've always... Yeah, you saw nothing. <laughs> That's so funny, man. <laughs> Okay. Oh, that was the guy jumping off. I thought that was the other guy seeing me. There's a scarab somewhere here, and I think it might be... Oh, I think it is accessible. My runes are over there, but, like, do, do my runes matter? I guess they kind of do. I guess they kind of do. Let's go get him. I, I just did elite damage to that guy. <laughs> yep, you heard it here first. I, a Gen Z, know what leet is. <laughs> I mean, I, I only know of it because I've heard it referenced by people older than me on the internet. So, um, yeah, that, that's the only reason. But hey, aren't you glad that your culture is rubbing off on me, older people? By older people, I mean millennials. You know, for a long time, I thought I was uh, part of the millennial generation, but actually I am part of Gen Z. You know, just because uh, I, I heard millennial used to describe people around my age group, usually. Uh, around my age group when I was younger, especially, but... I guess that's not what they meant. I guess they mean, like, <laughs> genuinely, my freaking parents, despite being fairly old. So, so, somewhere around there, somewhere around that stage, are apparently considered millennials. It's just uh, odd to think about. Generations are weird. I, I, I don't think there's any, like, super uh, concrete definition for generations, because at the end of the day, it's something we make up to sort ourselves into, like, age groups, but it's not entirely consistent. Hello, Poison Flower. Man, you really added the spice to this combat set piece in this room. I have to say, good job, Poison Flower. That was that was an incredibly intense battle. You just, uh, you performed well, and so did the zombie. Oh my god, more of them. What will ever will we do? We kill them just as fast as we do everywhere else in the game, despite this being a high-level area. Maybe I was giving this place a little, <laughs> overhyping this a little bit. I was like, watch out. If you're at the point in the game I am now, you don't want to go in the sewers. And, like, it's true that they are, I think, harder than Landell. Like, they're supposed to be. They're not that bad. Okay, we have two ways to go here. And bet choosing between giant plant route and not giant plant route. I think I'm going to go not giant plant route. I know the plant lovers watching this video are going to disagree with that. But I, as a, as a person who plays this game where the plants attack you with poison and they never fucking stop doing it... <coughs> I'm going to go the other <coughs> the other way. Oh no, look what we have. As if this place couldn't get any worse. It's basilisks. Honestly, I'm going to put on the pustule. Um, pustule is uh, here. Can't believe I was actually able to back up. Oh right, I was going to change my outfit. And uh, that meant I was going to, that meant I was going to take off the thing because I'm not going to have, uh, I'm not going to need the arsenal charm anymore for uh, heavy load. Or uh, for, for, to have a medium load. Oh my fucking god. Okay. Maybe I can kind of tell why these guys are so hated by so many people. They are a bit annoying to chase down, especially when my death blight is as high as it is. I'm going to use this time while we wait for this to go down to change. What? Yeah, in the middle of those sewers. No one's around here to see me. Who would come down here? This here is the Fell Omen Cloak with the Vulgar Militia Gauntlets and the Omen Killer Boots. Margot doesn't have like, or Morgoth, I guess is his true name. Morgoth does not have a full set, it's just his cloak, because the cloak, according to the item description, is the only thing he wears, which I never even noticed that. Uh, I just, I thought, like, he had, uh, I guess he, he has a bunch of fur underneath, and that kind of covers it and makes it hard to tell that the, his cloak is the only thing he wears. So I guess if I truly wanted to play, if I truly wanted to cosplay as Morgoth, I have to do this. I don't know. I don't want to do that. <laughs> All right. This might be a weird question to ask, but like, which one feels more wrong to you? Having no shirt on but pants or having no pants on but a shirt? Because for me, it's the latter one. I would rather wear pants whenever necessary. Not only does it look weird, it feels weird too. <laughs> That's just my opinion, though. I, I know other people probably don't share it. How much damage does this do against you? I'm gonna get off this topic before uh, I go too far with this. Uh, not nearly as much as the Moonlight Grey Sword. All right, we're gonna switch back to that immediately because it does great, a, a great freaking job against you. I was kind of expecting you to s swing that twice, but I guess that's Morgoth's deal. Not just any old omens. Nice. You know, I have to say, for like, as, you know, Mar omens are kind of like this very looked down upon uh, race in this world. Omen bear, and that's a special item. 
and they're like they're trapped in these sewers for their entire lives basically they have all these horns growing out of them they have all the nightmares and stuff clogging up their brains that they do so like coming on here and slaughtering all of them the, the, <laughs> it doesn't feel great but you know this isn't like Undertale where you're where you're guilt tripped if you kill enemies. Uh, Doll of a Curseborn Bear and uses FP to unleash race that chase down foes. Oh my babies have all their horns excised, causing most to perish. His fetishes are made to moralize them. Please don't hate me or curse me, please. Is that what an omen said before I, someone hated them and then cursed them? Well, that's sad. Ah, uh, the Regal Omen Baron. This is one the Morgoth's uh, thing gave us, the Remembrance. I have not done this in a while. What is this going to do down here? <laughs> I am a barrel. <laughs> Can I like stealth past the omens in the starting hallway like this? Oh, that'd be so fu that'd be so fun to see. I got to try that again if I remember. Let's see where we end up from here. Speaking of the main hallway, I think we're close to it. I hear a scarab. I don't know where the scarab is. Ooh, you can see there, there's a pipe running through this room and a place you can jump down inside of it. There's also a ladder that doesn't go down all the way. We'll have to find our way over there at some point. Aha, yes, this does get us higher up in this room. That is what I thought. Three poison stone, okay. Sorry, uh, something, something's come up in my throat. Some mucus has appeared in my throat. Sorry if you were eating while watching this video or drinking, that'd be even worse. Dappled white cured meat, immunity, robustness, and focus. I think the only thing that increases uh, vitality for death blight is uh, the thing. Or dappled cured meat. I don't know which one of these is new. Oh, reduced effectiveness lasts longer. That's what the difference between white cured meat and regular cured meat. I have eight stone sword keys. Small stone of the poison core. Throw at enemies to cause buildup of poison. I think these are like a pretty basic item that we are only finding now for the first time. I've long forgotten how to craft them. Well, can I craft them? Have I been able to craft them this whole time? No, actually, I can't craft them either. I guess I've long forgotten to craft them too. Uh, oh, hold on. <laughs> They'll never know. <laughs> They'll never notice me. <laughs> I didn't know you could just become a door. Hold on, hold on. I gotta like stand right here as he's turning to walk back and see if he notices. In it. In it. Let me just sneak over here. <laughs> hey, you there. Notice anything different about this room? Hey, there's a door in the middle. They're, they're not even looking at me. <laughs> No! Why why did it turn off? Why did it turn off? Put it back on! Put it back on now! Put it back on quick! Oh my god. <laughs> You'll never notice a thing! Oh god. <laughs> what is this? Why does it every time I lock on it turns it off? I guess every time the game expects, hey, you're gonna go for an attack now, right? It'll, like, let me actually attack with it. I guess it's nice, thanks game, I wasn't going to attack with it, I was just gonna mess around, because that's what I do. Let's put on... in our flask. Temporarily boost strength. That'll actually be good for this sword, because, uh, for this Moonlight Greatsword, because it scales with strength. And I'm actually pretty low on physical damage with it because I don't have a lot of strength. Yeah, look, plus 46 physical damage. That's because I don't have very good strength. So I think this will help at least a little bit when I, whenever I decide to drink it. All right, what new places can we go? There's that over there. Does this even have anything? Well, I can make the jump, so I guess I might as well go check. I can get the jump on you. I love how these imps, and the same went for the hack eyes in Dark Souls 3. The imps freaking, they... They just don't notice you at all when you you ambush them. They just, like, sit there and take it. They're just like, wait, what? They were so focused on watching the area below that they don't even see you coming. It's kind of funny. Um, I can't get back up from there. I have to teleport out of here. All right, game, would you like to let me know who's seeing me now? Also, I believe these pipes may be some of the pipes that we're walking through. We might not just be like inside some wall somewhere. We might actually be crossing through this room, which is neat to think about. Hey, look up there. It's a little skylight with branches. Can I teleport out game? Holy 
Running through that room has never been easier. I like how this cloak kind of turns red as you, it gets near the bottom. Maybe it's the blood more God had on his hands as he killed everyone with a wooden cane. Bye. <laughs> I guess we're not dealing with you anymore. Are you the one that drops down to start throwing stuff at us? Probably. You're dead now. That's what you get. Smoldering butterfly makes sense. That's what one of the things you need to craft those pots. I'm gonna take care of you first, I think. Never mind, you're just gonna sit there and chill. Alright then, I'm gonna... Oh, uh, you came down now. Of course you did. You were like, you should have taken care of me right then. Oh no, don't do that attack on here. Not there, no. God, that's the worst attack that they could possibly do. Hi, buddy. <laughs> that's the worst attack they could possibly do on those pipes because, like, it's such a long attack. They run straight forward for such a long time. Maybe you can jump out of the way. Okay, I have learned this time. <laughs> We're gonna take care of you right now. You know what? Have a freaking, have a freaking moon blade. Have a freaking moon blade. And then have a twin blade. Moon blade and then a twin blade and then a moon greatsword. I'm having so much fun with this moon greatsword. It's not gonna replace the twin blade, I don't think, but it's gonna be, it's gonna show up in the rotation of weapons. That I'll say. And the moon veil I'm going to reserve for like super duper annoying encounters. Because otherwise, you know, people complain a lot about people who use the moon veil because it's over, it's overpowered. And while I think I should be able to use whatever weapons I want, I also understand, because I haven't been using the Moon Veil very much, uh, for probably similar reasons. Okay, well maybe if I can make this jump... Okay, yeah, uh, we, we can jump up to that platform. That's not... I thought the height was bigger than it was, the height difference right there. That's a second! I'll be honest, I thought that was a player phantom, and I was still online. Wow. These guys are hardy down here, especially because of how much damage they do. Alright, time to show these guys a little something. A little something special. A little something special I can do. There's something strange in the neighborhood. Who are you gonna call? Ghostbuster! <laughs> Am I the only one that, like, enjoyed the 2016 reboot of Ghostbusters? I mean, I'm sure I'm not the only one who enjoyed it, but, like, the only one who kind of liked it. I mean, uh, I was very young when I watched it, and that was the only time I ever watched it, so I guess my opinions might be different now, but I, I don't know. I thought it was pretty fun. Like, I got, I got the first movie, uh, when I watched it, you know, it was cool, it was pretty fun at the start, it was especially kind of creepy, and that's what I liked about it. Then it kind of goes downhill in the second half, in my opinion, where, like, aside from the giant Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man, which is fun, the whole, like, the whole deal with that one guy romancing the ghost or whatever, I, I didn't like that at all. I mean, I, I never liked that kind of stuff as a kid. And you know what? I still don't like that stuff. It's just, it just feels so phoned in. It feels like every movie from that era had to have a romance scene. It, it was required. Even The Matrix couldn't go without it. What are you do- He caught a nasty case of the, of the, the, the stinkies down here. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, I, I didn't think the 2016 reboot was like scary or anything. I, Cause I- one of the things I liked about the first movie was that it had some genuinely creepy moments. As funny of a movie it was, it was supposed to be, like, it was supposed to be kind of campy, silly. There were some scary parts, like the time when the, the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man was looking up at them with that angry face. That did kind of creep me out when I was a kid. Nowadays, it probably wouldn't. I can kick this ladder, and I'll create a shortcut down to this room, and now... Using that, we're able to jump into this pipe. I don't know where this pipe is. We'll find out, though. That's what we're here to do. Uh, there's a rat going over there. I think I'll avoid the rat for now. We'll head this way. I think this this way is actually get, taking us nearer to the big room. So now we're actually crossing through there. Very cool. Ah, that's what these things are. I keep hearing these. And yep, they're scarabs. Uh, flask scarabs, to be specific. So not super helpful. I didn't need that at all. Um, I had all four cerulean flasks, but I, I took it. All right, we're going to do left wall strats, as the Lethal Company pro players would say. So we're going to start with the left side and then work our way from there. Hello. I actually do need more of those. And by more of those, I mean one of those. Close enough. Gimme. Nearing yet another one. It's just another Cerulean one, yeah. You just get a lot of bonus flasks down here, I've just noticed. It's kind of weird. Things down level 7. Where will this drop us off? Aha, back in the big room. Yeah, we have been crossing in the big room. I really like that. The, the fact that those tubes that you climb on top of in the big room are actually, like, hallways you've been going through in this area. That's really neat. It shows, it shows how interconnected the place is. 
I like the sewers a lot. I mean, looks aside, this place is pretty cool, honestly. Might be, um, might be up there as one of my favorite legacy dungeons, you know. Aside from the fact that it's covered in shit and grime, but what can you do with sewers? <laughs> That's par for the course. Alright, now we're going left over here. See where this goes. Um, get another health. Why do I want those? Why would I ever want those? Well, I say that and I just refilled my, uh, Cerulean Tears and I would actually like to use another flask of those if, uh, if the game's offering. Well, I hear another one, so it's possible the game's offering. Eye of Yellow. Those are usually associated with Frenzied Flame. So... Do you remember? That just jogs the memory. The Lord of Frenzied Flame. Beneath Lanedale. At the very bottom lies our lord. Hmm. And we found an eye of yellow here. And we're underneath Landell. That was probably That was probably the more That was probably the more notable hint. I don't know what just happened. <laughs> an imp started to activate and then it accidentally fell. Hey! <laughs> an actual like you an actual a commoner with an actual chance to hit you. That's interesting. It didn't play the shing sound when I hit him, when I killed him. Okay, well, seems like this place is nothing more than a bunch of dead ends. Well... Oh, yeah, th there's one place we haven't been yet. It's the place where the rat went, which I think was around here. It's where we've dropped in, which was... Oh, God, where... Where am I? Where, where am I? <laughs> what? Where is this? I... I'm lost now. Okay, wait. Um, I recognize this. This is going back to the uh, the place where you can see the big ol' room. Okay, I think it's through this. Yeah, this, this. I just saw that gate and I got confused. There it is, and then this way we have not been to yet. Told you this place is confusing. Gotta make a mental map in your head. Alright, should I keep doing left wall strats? I suppose so. Let's go down this way. There's a dead body in there. I feel like I would have gotten the item off of that. Or I guess it wasn't an M corpse after all. I've definitely not killed rats in the in these tunnels yet, so that's new. Oh boy, where does that go? I'm gonna jump over it first. We're not doing down wall strats yet. Okay, that's that. Uh, is that a giant rat? Sorry, a a a, a, a giant er rat? Yeah, yeah, it is. <gasps> oh, uh, hi, Basilisk. I see you there. <laughs> Let's go past where the giant rat was for now. Um, oh my god. Oh, this is just back here. Okay. Uh, let's drop down here then, because I, I'm not leaving this giant rat alive. Come on. We gotta kill it. Okay, we got you and you. Jump past, jump past, jump past. Okay. I wasn't that worried. Don't don't make it sound like I was worried to me. Come on. I was not worried. It was a freaking basilisk. Think I'm worried about basilisk? Ba ba basilisk? Their names can be hard to say plural sometimes. All right, well, this just gives us more options. Oh, actually, I remember this. I think I remember... Ah, uh, never mind, I don't. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Where am I now, then? <laughs> I've seen so many does not open from this side doors that I can't even remember which ones I've seen. <laughs> I thought that we had just, like, found the way to open a shortcut. All right, well, let's do left wall stress from... I have been here before. No! Oh god, he knocked me off the ladder. That's the first time I've shown that! Oh, okay, that's fine. It's really close to the start, this room. Another weapon from the Omen Cleaver. Well, the, the first one wasn't a weapon, you know what I mean. Heavy, heavy bladed curved sword of colossal size awarded to Omen as a tool of war. This weapon is made to take advantage of brute strength. The pattern etched upon the blade is remnants of a uh, deteriorative malediction. Indeed, when bestowing a weapon, preparations must be made for taking it away. So they were only given to them for so long. You give the omens one thing, and then you take it away from them. Why were you, like, in attacking mode? Y'all never work like that before. You started an attack while turning. I've never seen them do that. I guess that was a little trick he had planned. He knew I was there all along. This hole. Bow, bow, bow. Oh my god, nice ambush, buddy. Didn't work, though. <laughs> I think this finally, yes. We can open this door in his face and then just leave him there. 
to like wonder what the hell just happened. Wait, what? what? <laughs> he was like falling asleep right there. I was like, what? what? Is a door in my face? Aha, uh -huh, and I recognize this. This is where we have to go to progress. Actually, not that long an area. It's it's longer than a minor dungeon, but because uh, like I'm only an hour and 20 minutes in and that's pretty long, but like it's longer than a minor dungeon, but definitely shorter than a legacy dungeon. Still, I think it's big enough to be counted as one. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. This is a late game jar enemy. Oh my god. Oh, these guys, these little guys don't matter. The small enemies are barely any harder, even in the late game, but the big ones certainly are harder. Look at this little lid there. Oh, it disappeared. You can't look at the lid anymore. How sad. Ritual pot down here. Bunch of broken boxes, too. Wonder who made those. And a cage elevator. Was there another one like this earlier in the game? Oh my god, epilepsy warning. Watch <laughs> out. Flashing light. And the cage is there. I think uh, it is kind of a serious tradition. Look at the particles going up as I'm going down the elevator. I think I pointed that out before. Very fast elevator, because it needs to be in order to hit the bottom fast. Um, it's just kind of a tradition in every Souls game to have an elevator that is a cage that you enter. And so, uh, that is Elden Ring's version of it, I guess. Let's rest down here. Can I level up? No. I can if I use enough runes. Let's see what this place is called. Forsaken Depths. And we're moving this way a lot. How's my physical negation? Okay. To be honest, that might not matter that much. I'll probably leave my armor the way that it is. I'm gonna use one of these. That should get us part of the way there. And like five of these should do it. Yep. Do I need 8,000 to level up now? I'm close. Hmm. Well, you know what? Okay, I was considering leveling up something like Endurance, but, you know, 42 is the meaning of life, and having that a vigor of 42 just makes the most sense to me right now. Besides, it gets us to 15,000 HP. Man, the numbers don't mean a whole lot when all you can see is the bar. I kind of wish you could see the number of health you had, but I, I understand. The bar is enough. You don't need to know exactly the number of damage you have. It's just that because you can't see how much damage is inflicted on you anyway, I made incorrect assumptions in Dark Souls 3 that the NPCs had a fuck ton of health, like even more health than you, and while that might be true in some cases, actually, they really didn't. In fact, they had a very similar amount of health. Paying attention to the damage numbers and comparing it to your own health, they, they had a similar amount of health to you. Take a look at this. You went from unique looking sewer area to a hero's grave boss run up. Kinda went back to being generic, huh? <laughs> That's no problem. Manningstone level 6. And... Uh, wouldn't you guess it? It's boss time! Major boss of the subterranean shunning grounds! Is Moog the Omen! We've heard a bit about you! Aren't you like the Luminary or something? That's that one hero character from uh, Dragon Quest XI. So you're going out to save the world, huh? That's pretty cool. Though I'm sure Mordigan hates you, right? You know, you actually kind of look like Mordigan now that I'm saying it. I haven't actually played Dragon Quest XI, but I watched a video of it. Moog attacks with that, and a huge spear that he swings very delayed-like and has a lot of reach. He can also throw blood at you. The blood will stay on the ground as boiling hot blood and will deal bleed damage for standing in it. Honestly, I should probably equip the Robustness Talisman instead of Vitality. I'll hopefully remember to do that after uh, the, after I die for the first time, because I very much doubt I'm going to survive this first time. You've seen how much health this guy has. He's got a lot. I haven't had many chances to hit, but I haven't been giving myself that many chances to hit. If you're beneath him, you send the blood beneath him. Uh, he has the exploding claw, you just need to get away from that and avoid the explosion. So dodge it at the right time. Uh, Joseph Anderson called that claw attack unreactable. I completely disagree, that is very reactable. Uh, you have to react quick, but you have to react quick for a lot of the other stuff in this freaking game. Ow! Okay, that, that, that's gotta freaking hurt, honestly. Especially with this armor where, you know, it's not exactly protecting my uh, torso and all. I'm hoping to get a, another stance break on him. I also kind of want to use this, but uh, I also want to heal. I also want to do a lot of things. Heal, there we go. Yeah! Okay, it doesn't take a lot of damage from that, unlike the other omens. His face is, like, covered in horns, as you can see. Now, I want to point out something interesting about this guy. Notice his health bar. Doesn't something about it look kind of strange? Nothing about the actual bar itself is different, but its position on the screen is wrong. It's slightly higher than it should be. 
it's taking the place of the location where the second boss health bar would go if there were two enemies fighting you. Yet, for some reason, uh, yeah, his is set to that position and hasn't been fixed in any of the patches. It's a very minor oversight, so I, I totally understand why it hasn't been fixed. And I'm not, like, begging for it to be fixed or anything. It does show that maybe a different fight was plan planned to be here originally. And there's even more evidence supporting that, but, uh, I don't want to talk about that evidence right now. That's for later. Yeah, you may, you may have had to fight two enemies in here at one point. Now, oh my freaking god. I'm not used to those delays. Alright, well, there's my first death. Honestly, didn't do too bad for first attempt. This guy can be quite hard, so I'm, I'm proud of that. There's robustness. It occurs to me that I do not... I have a plus one of this and a plus one of this, but I do not have the plus one for this. And I don't remember where I get it. Okay, good. I just looked it up. I'm not supposed to have it yet. <laughs> we'll be getting that later. Oh, right. I have, I have Margaret's outfit on, almost. I should be role-playing as him. Thy kind are all of a piece. Pillagers emboldened by the flame of ambition. Or in your case, the blood of ambition? I'm not really sure. Well, the blood is like fiery and all, so yeah, I guess he is emboldened by the flame of ambition. This run's not going the greatest. Well, when has the boss run ever gone the greatest? Hey, that attack is still dodgeable. Oh man. You got tons of health though, so I gotta dodge lots of attacks, so I hope to survive this. Ah, damn, that's a pretty delayed uh, explosion attack. I gotta I gotta be more careful with that. I think it is possible to dodge like that, though. Dodge around him to avoid it. Oh, God, that's still hitting me. I didn't realize it could hit through him like that. All right, fine. That one went straight ahead instead of in, like, a little shotgun blast. Yeah, that, that attack is so reactable. Come on, Joseph. <laughs> you could do better than that. Okay, actually, I wonder if I was doing more... I was doing better damage with uh, the Dark Moon Greatsword. And, you know, I might even do better damage if I drink the Physic. I can also introduce spells into the mix later. Right now, I'm having fun with this. Oh, my God. That's hard. Oh, I'm all right. My flask doesn't actually heal me, so uh, that's dangerous. That does something to my damage. Ah. <laughs> it also does something to his damage, apparently. I'm gonna do something I've never done before. Drink Physic before boss fight. There's an idea. Oh, what are you doing, my friends? What did that accomplish for you? Absolutely nothing? Yes, correct answer. Why is that not hitting him? What? There we go. Holy shit. <laughs> also, what are you hitting with that spear? I'm sorry. There's nothing there. <laughs> ah, he's frostbitten. He's going to take extra damage. <laughs> All right. This might be a fight I need to focus on. This is like our first kind of like huge challenging late game fight, which is cool. I'm excited for it, but also I need to freaking focus. Because this is going to be hard. Uh, well, I don't know where the place to hit him was, if there was. <laughs> what was that sound effect going on there? I hear that a lot in games. Is that like a bug? Right, I need to get away from him. I don't think this guy has a phase two of any kind. I think it's just these attacks for the entire fight. Oh, you know what? I remember, Black Flame Tornado with the Godskin Peeler does really well against him. Unfortunately, I don't have the Godskin Peeler equipped at this point, because why would I be prepared? Nice! That's great damage. Was getting back up to this. <laughs> he actually stopped and waited for me. Very patient. Thanks, buddy. Elden Ring bosses never do that. Usually, Elden Ring bosses stand up in a half a second, and then they're right back to hitting you. To punish you for thinking you could possibly swing a weapon or do anything at all. <laughs> nah, it's the boss's turn to shine. We're doing good. We're doing good. Okay. Let this go. Not go wrong. I actually managed to dodge that. Somehow. I'm not used to that. 
I remember this. I remember this guy's attacks being like super hard to dodge, but I have to say, this is fun. This is a really good boss, and that's not usually my opinion on most bosses. In fact, I dare say I like it more than Mar Morgot. Renala though, Renala's still too too good for me to say um, to say that this one's better. Oh god, oh god, oh god. There's a small caveat with me liking this boss, though, which we will get into much later. For now, he's done! Only like three tries. Man, that was good! Get your broken health bar out of here. Blood Flame Talons. That's the claw attack he was using. A hundred thousand runes. <laughs> wow. A Blood Oath Incantation granted by the Lord of Blood. Creates blood flame lacerations for the caster, which explode in an instant. After dealing damage, blood flame continues to build up onset of blood loss for a very short time. Simple. Alrighty. Slide of grace, and a chest. Alright, honestly, looking at my recording time... I might have time to go back and do something else later, though. I'll consider doing that later. Ooh, Urtree's Favor plus one. That's pretty cool. I don't need to read that. We know what that is. Let's l take a level up. Probably will. I probably will level up like Endurance or something at this point. Melina? Melina has something to say. Guess we'll see to that in a bit. Endurance. If you intend to claim the Frenzied Flame, I ask that you cease. It is not to be meddled with. It is chaos, devouring life and thought unending. However ruined this world has become, however mired in torment and despair, life endures. Births continue. There is beauty in that. Is there not? If you would become Lord, do not deny this notion, please. Leave the frenzied flame alone. That's what I was going to do. You don't have to worry at all. But honestly, your warnings against me taking it are making me really curious to see what's beyond this point. So, uh... Mind if I at least, like, you know, take a peek? No? Good, alright! You just disappear in your usual way, and... Honestly, this is probably one of the most hidden things in the game. Attack this little area, and it's an illusory mantelpiece, I guess? It's not illusory, though. It, it doesn't disappear. It just goes down. After defeating Moog, the music is disabled. But if you were to die in this next area, which is definitely possible, the music turns back on. Personally, though, I think this area is much cooler without the music, so briefly, I'm gonna have it off, in case we do die here. Now let's see what there is back here. If you have not yet beaten Morgoth the Omen King, there will be a seal up here and you will not be allowed to continue past this point. Until you go beat him. Hello there. What is that you have in your hands? It's kinda hard to tell. A sword. Okay. That's all that is. Oh, wait. Maybe it's not a sword. Maybe it's... The hands. The hand bows. The bows with the hands attached? That, um... Look a bit familiar. Yellow Ember. Yep, this is definitely Frenzy Flame Place. Don't need to tell me that twice. I figured that out right away. Throughout this entire climb down, there are these structures. You cannot destroy them with your own attacks. Rather, you have to get these guys to aggro. These, like, uh, new enemies. I think they're, um... Yeah, they're some of these guys that have reanimated and are walking around again. You have to get these guys to do that and break it for you so that you can obtain... The Nomadic Merchant Set. <laughs> oh god, oh god! No! No! <laughs> I did die here, it's not po It's not impossible to die here! Like I was saying... Decorated with shiny Chiny... D chiny <laughs> tiny gems in a wide spectrum of colors. These merchants once thrived as the Great Caravan, but after being accused of heretical beliefs, their entire clan was rounded up and buried alive far underground. Then they chanted a curse of despair and summoned the Flame of Frenzy. All of these guys are nomadic merchants. Or were once who once were nomadic merchants. The few who survived are the merchants you find throughout the game. 
I did not piece this together on my own, I'll fully admit, even though I saw this area played through, and I think I may have even played it through myself without ever figuring that out. And uh, once it, once the, uh, the connection was made known, it felt kind of obvious in retrospect, because, like, you hear them playing the violins. Who else plays violins in this game? String instruments, whatever they're playing, I don't care exactly what it is. And where else do you see these hand things in the game? I also, uh, the person I watched play through this part didn't pick up the Nomadic Merchant set, so it was harder to get that across, uh, anyway. Hey, you there. Hey, you there. Ah, come over here and break these for me, and then die quickly, please, unlike the other guy. Good, 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 good. Uh, let me go grab the item. Let me stand up off the ground. Five Eye of Yellow! Yeah, I know, the flen Frenzy Flame is around! Thanks, oh my god, I suck. <laughs> This entire area is just gonna be me dying to each of these guys. What are you doing? What are you raising the sword in preparation for who? Now is the time I should probably tell you about something unfortunate. The first merchant we ever found, Kale. I mentioned it before, but I'll say it again. They had a cut quest line, or he had a cut quest line, that involved this place. Basically, from what I can remember, how it went is like, you talk to him a little bit in Limgrave, and then once you meet Godric, he actually leaves, and he goes to Lyurnia. Then in Lyurnia, he asks you to find a letter on a crow's, uh, on a, being carried by a crow, and that's where that concept came in that is no longer in the game. It's not in the final game. The reason why he's setting out on a journey is he wants to know what happened to his people. And then he finds them here. Like this. He finds out the fact that they have been buried underground, and... Let's just say... He chanted in despair along with them, and summoned the Flame of Frenzy within him. Yeah. I don't know if maybe this, the Nomadic Merchants are the ones who summoned the Flame of Frenzy in general, like, the, it originates because of them? If so, honestly, that's pretty cool. Like, the merchants you've been meeting in the game, uh, or at least their ancestors, I guess, or their brethren, are actually the ones the reason that the Frenzied Flame exists. In other news, we picked up Frenzied Cookbook Level 2, Frenzy Flame Stone. Alright, who cares? I like how there's boluses on those. Was the other one clarifying boluses? You can kill him, but he doesn't aggro to you, and he honestly makes for a nice atmosphere. You can also kill this guy, but he's not doing anything. If Unless they're walking around and attacking me, I'm not gonna care. This music, it's so peaceful, and but also, like, kind of a contrast to everything else around you. I don't know if that's the same melody, it's not the same melody the Nomadic Merchants are making, I just remembered what the regular, or what the, the regular, I'm so sorry guys down here, the surviving Nomadic Merchants out in the world, uh, play on their v violas, violins, whatever. I think that's a violin, that sounds like one. Hello, there's another living one there. The rest of them have all been taken over or killed by something else. Now we have typical From Software platforming section. They do this at least once in every game, I swear. I'm glad in Dark Souls 3 they just limited it to Firelink Shrine, but this is Elden Ring's version of climbing down grave stones. Seems to be nothing you can go over, uh, nothing you can do to go over there, so I guess we have to jump to this one. Alright, good. You have that guy playing the music for you as you go all the way down here. Yeah, if I had the music on right now, the subterranean shining grounds ambient music would be playing right now, and I kind of think it takes away from the atmosphere of this place. I kind of prefer it if they left the music off in this part, because, again, I would like there to be some parts of the world where music just doesn't play. Areas like this. Because uh, it, it makes them stand out a lot more. Hollow Knight does that too, where, like, most of the areas in Hollow Knight have music, which makes the few that don't stand out a lot. And that game is also just super, superb in atmosphere. We're not playing Hollow Knight, though, so we don't worry about that. Inescapable Frenzy. At least you can attack with it. That's the that's the reason you should be you should be overcome with Inescapable Frenzy. It causes the Yellow Flame of Frenzy to blaze from the caster's eyes. The caster then latches onto foes, spreading the madness. This incantation also causes the build of madness in the caster and is only effective against Tarnished. To gaze into one another's eyes is truly the most intimate form of human contact. God. You heard of STDs? Now, LTDs, looking transmitted diseases. <laughs> All right. Um, yellow ember. Sorry, I just I feel like making jokes to like the mood of this place a little bit, but maybe maybe some of you would say that doesn't fit. 
Hey, you know what? I understand. But I also disagree. I'm gonna keep doing it, sorry. Do you think most of the streamers you watch play this game actually, like, stop to pay attention through this part and enjoy the atmosphere? No, they just ran through because they're impatient. <laughs> sorry, no. <laughs> Nothing against streamers or anything. I like streamers. I watch streamers. Sometimes. Great stone shield with an intricately carved fingerprint design. There's more than one fingerprint in there. It should be fingerprint stone shield. One of the heaviest of all great shields. Part of the tomb of an ancient god, the readerless fingers relayed their message through these imprints, said to be the very seeds from which frenzy first sprouted. Okay, so it did not sprout from the merchants. There seems to be one more thing we need to open. Do I hear a guy going... Or do I need to anger one of... I do, if I want that item, I need to anger one of them. I'm sorry. I hope this doesn't, like, kill you. Okay, good, it doesn't. Come on this way. I need you to break something for... Wow. He really doesn't notice me. He doesn't want to fight at all. But then how do I open that, then? Yeah, he just... I just kind of came in, sliced him, and he was like, Oh my god. What is this person doing? Who do they think they are? And yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. Anyone around here, maybe? Oh, there's this guy here. Is it, Can this guy attack me? I didn't even notice him at all. The ones that are living blend in so well. Oh, man. That must be something. That must be either inescapable frenzy or something else. All right, come on this way, buddy. I just need you to break this thing for me. Now, please don't kill me in the process, either. All right, I need you to get a little closer than that. Oh, wait. Mikola's Needle? Sure, I'd like some little more information about Mikola. Are they a vaccine producer? Because they have a needle? The Empyrean Mikola crafted a needle to resist the influence of outer gods. Those who have inherited the Flame of Frenzy yet wish not to become its lord would do well to seek Mikola's Needle. All right. So don't worry, Melina, it's reversible in case I accidentally stumble into it. But uh, stumbling into this is no mere accident. I'm just gonna say that. I'll spare you. Undertale taught me how to do that very nicely. And I can tell that your name is yellow. Ah, don't worry, no fall damage. Even though you're landing on a pile of giant bricks that would totally, like, cause gashes in your skin. Yeah, nothing. Down here, we have a combat lock on. And Melina has yet more fearful words. Fearful for her, not for us. I guess a bit for us. I ask you one more time. Please, seek not the frenzied flame. As one who strives to become a lord, deny not the lives, the new births of this world. Those who would are not fit to be called lord. When the land they preside over is lifeless. And... Hold on. Would you say the same thing about joining Ronnie? Because, um... She said something about maybe... Removing senses from people, and uh... I don't know if you'd be up for that either. Please. Put a stop to this madness. The Lord of Frenzied Flame is no lord at all. When the land they preside over is lifeless. I agree with you. And as thus, I won't be doing it. So to change the topic, did you notice that those two skulls are copies of the same skull? And so are those two over there. They're the same rotation and everything. It might just be the same skull copy and pasted many times. Don't worry, Melina, I'm not doing this. However, I will mention that you can do it with the help of her. Remember her? No? <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> This is Hyetta. The last time we saw her was in Lyernia at this, not, not that one, this church. We gave her all those grapes, the Sherbriri grapes. She found her way uh, to the distant light and it took her here. And she is now a finger maiden for the three fingers instead of the two fingers. <sighs> so you're here as well, are you? I realized as we've talked, I'll be a maiden. And you, surely a lord, go to the door ahead. After divesting yourself of your possessions, it will surely open. And the three fingers will welcome you. May the flame of chaos find purchase within you. That's all she says. She directs you on how you can actually do this, because ordinarily, it's not clear. 
what you have to do for this. You might be wondering right now, why on earth would you ever do this? And, uh, so did I. But then I looked up a little bit of info about the lore behind these, uh, behind this type of thing, and I think I do understand it a little bit more. The Flame of Frenzy will infect anyone who is overcome with despair or has suffered a hardship, like Hayeta. Hayeta was formerly known as Irina down in Weeping Peninsula, and while we were going off to do a little quest for her, we were going off to find her father in Castle Morn, she ended up being killed by someone. Her father also went down this route as he was where we got one of the Shabriri graves from. And Shabriri graves are the eyes of the people who have been overtaken by Flame of Frenzy. We saw him invade in Lyurnia over here somewhere, Revenger's Shack. So yeah, people are basically like suffering and madness and they're like, my life is over now. And that's when the Flame of Frenzy takes over and does whatever it does to you. I'm honestly not really sure. They just... I guess it, like, it makes you want to work together with it to destroy the world and m melt everything into one. May chaos take the world. I don't know if we've ever heard that. Yeah, we have, actually. A couple of ghosts have said that, but yes. They want to overcome the world with chaos because they absolutely hate the world the way that it is for treating them this way. And, you know, that applies to players, too. Elden Ring is a hard game, and some might even say unfair. And it might even be unfair on purpose because the Golden Order... And, like, everything has been unfair to you. You've had to fight so many things, you've had to get hurt so many times. And, I mean, we got all the way up to the freaking Elden Throne like we were supposed to, and the Earth Tree's blocking us! Now I have to take this detour into the super hard late game, play the rest of the game just because, oh no, actually, you're not allowed inside. Even though the freaking grace that comes from us said that you could come and do this. There's also the fact that many people consider playing through these games to be, like, quote, suffering through them. And while I disagree with that, I can certainly understand how others agree with that. That playing through this game has been a very, very difficult, very challenging experience. And so, if you'd like to give the Golden Order its comeuppance by the end of the game, all you gotta do is find this area and unequip everything. All weapons and all armor, and then go through the door ahead. I think you can keep stuff in your quick items menu. But then, the three fingers will hold you. There's a way to reverse this, but reversing it is quite hard. Also, did I did I ever mention that you can punch? I can't punch right now. Uh, but punching does 20 damage. Plus, it also scales with strength, I'm pretty sure. Or scales with nothing in this game. Scales with something in Dark Souls 3, though, that's for sure. I, however, do not really agree with this. I don't consider playing this game to be literal suffering, so instead of that, I'm going to don my outfit once more. Correction, don a new outfit, as well as re-equip my weapons. Alright, well, if that's all I'm gonna do down here, is come down here, speak to you, and then say I'm not actually gonna do this yet, I guess in the remaining time we have for this video, we can go take care of this. We've discovered it. Let's go do it. It's just a catacomb, shouldn't be too long. Alright, last time we just lit the grace and then went back up that way, which took us back to the surrounding grounds. Here we go into the real dungeon. Here's the boss door, though not outlined with statues this time. I think this, uh, this catacomb's a little different looking. For instance, you can tell the fog, the distance fog, it's the same color as the rest of Shining Grounds. The same stupid green color. Stinky green color. Oh, dear god. Alright, well, um, we're in for it this time, I guess. They're just zombies. What do you mean I'm in for it? What? Uh, this one's bigger, I guess. Oh, no. How scary. It's larger than the other ones. No, whatever will I do? <laughs> what the hell am I saying here? Oh, my God. We're in for it now. There's zombies, guys. Zombies are way too hard for us. Hello, buddies. Why are y'all guarding over here? Why did I... Whoa! Wait! That item pickup, it froze me! That never happens in this game, unless you're, like, taking stuff out of a chest. That's usually the only times that happens. That was like, that was like a Dark Souls item pickup where you're stopped in place. That was weird. All right. I'm guessing you are more the explodey guys and, like, the, the Minecraft creepers, I called them. Oh, my God. Uh, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Go ahead and do it. Got a wall of fire to get past. A firewall, if you will. I'm going to hack into the firewall. God, one of the best jokes from Undertale. And a list of so many great ones. Yeah! Actually, I don't know if it's one of the best, per se, but, you know. Alright, I think I'm gonna go uh, Flamethrower away first. I feel like Flamethrower away has the higher chance of being optional. Compared to... Ow! I have an idea. Shut it down with ice! 
<laughs> there we go. Perfect critical damage. Oh, dear God. You get that out of here. That's the same kind of poison worm things. Yeah, that's the same attack the ones in Castle, uh, the Shaded Castle we're doing. Castle Shaded. <laughs> Remember Shaded Castle? That was a while ago at this point. Okay. Rub your feet against this thing as you're jumping up in order to make it go back up. Those things work very oddly. Honestly, wish they were different, but what can I do? I think I know what weapon works well against these guys. Oh god, he scripted to see you. Good thing that I'm prepared with an attack! I said an attack! There we go! You have a lot of defense. Probably because you have a lot of horns. Ow! Oh god. Oh god. No, 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 That was just another joke I made. That was a joke I made in my Dark Souls 3 playthrough. I guess I'm making it again here. Because I reuse jokes. Because I'm not original. Well, I guess if they're my own jokes, then I'm still original. It's just that I'm, you know, I'm using my past material. I did not expect that to deal that much damage. Holy crap. This thing rocks against the omens. Crucible Scale Talisman. To go along with the knot and the feather. Reduces damage taken from critical hits. No, that's useless. Fashion for scale, bodies, aspects, of various creatures that are grown in the humi. Said to grow in the humi. You know, the, the little humies. You know, those little adorable humies. I love my- I love myself a good humi. So little little humi. They're so adorable. Adorable little humi. Alright, I'm done. H humid human. I don't know why that's funny to me, but it is for some reason. I guess my the the stinkies have overcome me. The sewer smell has overtaken my brain. I'm going insane now. I'm saying stupid shit. Yeah, even these guys are just as powerful as the dudes outside. But fortunately, we're ready for them. Look at that grave glove wart level nine. Hey, do we have do we have all the grave glove warts now? Wonder. This was probably a bad idea. That was a bad idea. No, was it wasn't. I can actually roll out of that pretty quick. Man, I don't have to sit there and wait until, to lower it back down. That's neat. Um, We are missing eight. How are we missing an upgrade material in between? That never happened in the previous games. I guess I'm just picking the wrong areas to explore first. That would be why. Um, Okay, so we're... Oh, this is a different room. They're trying to confuse me. They're trying to pull a fast one on me. But I noticed the glove ward in the center. There's a level 8. It only took 20 seconds. <laughs> Let's see what's this way first. Uh, I don't like the opening. Excuse me? Excuse me? Where's this? Is this another, like... Oh, it's like the beginning, but it's not... Is this one another one of those catacombs? They like to do this a lot in the late game ones for some reason, and like, yeah, it makes it confusing, but it's also like... I think there's like three different catacombs with that exact thing, and this is one of them, apparently. Yeah, this is supposed to look like the boss room, except it's not the boss room. Is that a summon sign? Yeah, it's not the boss room. It is a boss room, but you fight a gnomon inside of it. Just one? <laughs> no, not just one. Yeah, okay, good. Not three, that's what I was worried about. There we go. And this is doing so much freaking damage to you. I love it. Genuinely love it. I hope the other guy doesn't notice. Please, stance break. Stance break one of these times. There we go. You're dead now. Oh, the man. It got a backstab? What the hell? All right, I still have some room left, so let's go for one on you. There's another one. What? What? You're still alive. Oh my god. I thought there was three for a second. I just barely didn't kill that one. And I didn't notice. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> there, I killed you. <laughs> wow. Okay. That has to be the funniest example of, like, um, enemies hanging on with one health, uh, yet. That really looks like a message, but it's just a, it's just an, it's just a brick that's higher than the others. Man, look. Is this a father-son bonding moment happening in front of me right now? Am I ruining it? Am I am I slaughtering an innocent family of zombies right now? Just going out for their daily hike through the catacomb. Anything else from here? Ooh. Ooh, suspicious, suspicious, suspicious. Alright. In Dark Souls 3, that would have been an illusory wall. 100%. But not here, though. Because there's a lot of game space, so not everything is illusory walls. They only had so many assets to use, you know? You know... Where am I? Right now? Oh, what? 
Wait. Okay. Are they doing the copying thing again? Because I did not come out of that room before. There's no way. Yeah, they're doing the, they're doing the copying thing again. They're pretending like, oh, look, the flamethrower's down. Oh, look, it's down because this is a different part of the dungeon. You gotta understand. But nope, I didn't pick this up yet. And there's these people are alive in here. They were dead in the other one. So it's like the corpses of the zombies that were placed down. Oh, yeah, look at this. <laughs> it's like, hey, this guy totally just came in and found this friend dead. But no, this is a different part of the catacomb. Yeah, seriously, they really are doing this whole, like, repeat the catacomb, repeat the set piece thing again, aren't they? That's still a flamethrower, all right. Not like anything else comes shooting out of those things, right? Right, guys? Ooh, okay, this looks like the way you're supposed to go. I'm gonna go back that other way eventually. Don't, don't you worry, never fear. Robin Hood will soon be here. Ah. All right, we're good. I don't know what the ad was about. I know exactly what the app was about. The app was about me barely dodging that thing. All right, this looks like the way you're supposed to go. It's another one of these corner rooms with the pit. Go down. This is... Remember when I said this catacomb might be small, guys? Don't worry. Cat catacombs are never that big. Yeah, um, I forgot that I've entered Altus Plateau, and from this point on, the catacombs are big. <laughs> or the capital, more accurately. Here we go. This is actually the original room, and hey, look. It's one of these things. Didn't we play through another catacomb that had this very same gimmick? Oh look, the lever's up there, but oh my god, it's a similar looking area. Have you found it? No, you haven't. You have to go through a little bit more and try to find your way. I swear we've had that exact same gimmick before in a different catacomb. I'm sorry, you, you can't start climbing ladders while running. Got it, understood. Shut up! This isn't even consuming that much stamina for a greatsword. I watched Dark Souls 1 playthroughs, and whenever people use a greatsword at all, like, half their- over half their stamina's gone. Sometimes even their entire stamina bar just goes in one hit. It really did make stamina more generous in these games, didn't they? Well, I'm assuming your friend there's dead, so, uh, you're next! I'm sorry, but that's just how it is. Y'all are enemies, and I'm the protagonist. <laughs> that's how it is! This ain't Undertale! I brought that game up, like, three times now, for similar reasons. The reasons that fighting the, you know, Omen is kind of morally gray, you know? Or fighting, in, in the previous case, fighting those nomadic merchant guys. Alright, this is... Where now? That's not where we got the glove wart. This isn't another fucking room, is it? No, it's, it's it can't be. This isn't another fucking room! It can't be! It can't be another room! This is a whole new section of the dungeon? Please tell me I'm gonna see something- Oh my god, it's- Yeah, we're still going! What is this? Where did you come from? You just like spawned! I, I think you were on the ground and I hit you and then your animation just cut to where you were standing up. That's a lot of damage. A lot more than the ones in Landover were doing, I think. Man, that damage I did just now was so two years ago. More Great Glove Art level 8. And... A window. To the window! To the wall! <clears throat> um, hey. <laughs> Are you the wall? I think I found the wall. Hello, my name is Wall, and I will be your combatant. Ah, oh, you got hyper armor, you stupid hyper armor abuser. Fuck you! Now that damage, that's the stuff you like to see. That's the kind of damage we're going to be doing four years from now. In the future. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Stupid jokes, let's move on. Are you a lot... You're just a, an item corpse with no item. Alright, I get it. I, I understand. Alright, now we are back in a familiar place. Back with familiar tricks. Let's make our way to the top. I don't think we can... We can fast travel! Oh! Then let's just do that! <laughs> Only mini dungeon in the game that doesn't let you fast travel, because it's technically a part of Shunning Grounds, I guess? I mean, it's not playing the catacomb theme, so I guess that would be why. Alright, boss time! Let's see who we got! Escarp! Priest of Blood, probably the only mini-dungeon boss to be fully unique. 
this is the only time that you ever encounter this guy. He's also guarded with by dogs. I don't really know why. I don't, okay. Slow weapons, bad for dogs. Learned this now. That's a bunch of flies taking my blood. Hey, nah, you can't do that. You can't just unleash mosquitoes on me and think you're going to get away with it. Just you wait. Just you wait, sir, until I come back to you. He's using Moog's abilities. Oh, look at him. You can see his face. He's a pale old man. Oh, it's even playing unique battle music. Nice. Nothing generic. This, this really is a unique boss. Pretty cool. I guess it makes sense for a mini dungeon that you find inside a legacy dungeon. Only time it happens, I'm pretty sure. Uh, both this boss, uh, this theme, and finding a mini dungeon. However, um, he is quickly going down. Despite being in the shunning grounds full of tough foes, right? Like, okay. <laughs> Oh god, 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 Bam. Man, every time with this, these, this Elden Ring playthrough, isn't it? Where I kill a major boss, and I'm like, hey, that was fun, but then we still have time, so I end up going to do other stuff, and most of the time that involves killing yet another boss. So the true last boss of the video is not the major one, but the minor forgettable one. Just seems to happen every time, even with Morgoth. Stop. Will, will you go away already? You're dead! Lord of Blood's exaltation and the level up for us, right? Oh my god, barely one at this point. Just like the Kindred's, Kindred of Rot's exaltation. But it raises attack power when blood loss occurs in the vicinity. That's... Dumb. It, blood loss is very short, isn't it? Render up your offerings for, of blood to your lord. Drench my consort's chamber. Sh slake his cocoon's thirst. His awakening shall herald the dawn of our dynasty. Uh, I wouldn't listen to that guy if I were you. He sounds terrible. <laughs> well, that was subterranean shunning grounds fully cleared. I didn't expect that at all. That was actually pretty successful. And honestly, it didn't go too badly, despite me saying, oh, you better watch out. This place is difficult. That's right. I remember. I actually missed something down here. We're gonna have to head back down here real quick. It's just one minor thing. Don't worry about it. Along one of the walls, there is those three thingies there. I think one of them looks slightly different to the others. One of them has a little bit of a pop out in its texture. Yeah, secret chest. Very cool. A rune arc. That was less exciting than I thought there would be. Hmm, maybe there's more. I mean, they only, like, have illusory walls very rarely, but you never know. We've never seen that in this game yet, so maybe there's something more to see here? Oh, there's something more, all right. Something a little bit more cavernous. Something underground. We're not done with the underground in this game. Far from it, actually. Next time on Elden Ring, we keep going further down. Thank you all for watching if you did, and as always, I will see you all in the future.